You know, I didn't think I would be doing a capture card video for this channel, but I mean, look at this. How can I ignore this? I don't think most capture cards advertise at 22 FPS. Now, I was able to get this working, and in this video, I'm gonna take you on that journey. Cuz, uh, believe you me, it was quite the journey. No, we're not, we're not even doing the intro graphic that I honestly need to redo. We're just jumping right into this at 60 FPS, baby! Yeah! Smooth FPS. This is the EasyCab Game Link Raw, an inexpensive capture device that I solely bought because I got back into my Linux Curious phase. Again. And I wanted a slight upgrade to my Elgato HD60. No, not the HD, not even the HD60 S Plus. The original HDMI only USB 2.0 capture device that records at 1080p at 60fps. It's a bit of a small upgrade admittedly because the Game Link in a way is a slightly better HD60. I received my unit Christmas Day of 2021. I set it up on my desktop computer and I decided to play Sonic Mania because smooth animation and... Okay, something seems off here. This isn't 60 FPS. This isn't 60 FPS at all. This isn't even 30. According to the software I installed, it's 22 FPS. I got even less when I changed the color space from NV12 to YUY2. Not even 720p can get me up to 60. The best I can do is around 40. That's odd. Okay, I can record in 60, but really that just encodes the file at 60 FPS. That's not the actual frame rate that's being grabbed and captured. That would be the preview frame rate, which tells me if I hover over in a specific spot, your computer is too poor. Some frame has been discarded. Well, that's a problem. Uh, same thing happens in OBS. This doesn't even properly show the FPS being captured in Windows. It says 60 FPS, but the footage is no different than the quote-unquote official recording software. Uh, Game Link. So I think the FPS counter in OBS is the frames that are being rendered by the software, and not what the capture device is grabbing. It's an inexpensive slash cheap capture device, so I guess this isn't surprising, but as far as I can tell, no review has this issue that I'm aware of. There were times where I questioned if I was just imagining it, even going as far to go frame by frame in video editors, comparing footage that would also be taken with the Elgato. But yes, yeah, sanity confirmed. I tried looking up different solutions, but I couldn't find people with my exact issue with the device, so that search ended up cold. Well, it's a UVC device, a universal driver for webcams mostly. What if I looked up UVC device troubleshooting? Well, the suggestions mentioned that it could be an issue with the port or bandwidth being shared across devices making it perform suboptimally. Even suggesting that I get a separate PCIe USB card, so I'm not taking up the bandwidth from the motherboard. Not wanting to resort to buying more hardware just yet, I tried a different port, unplugged all my devices from my computer, and the exact same result each time. 22 FPS. I'm getting a little frustrated at this point. Out of desperation and morbid curiosity, I plug my USB device into a front USB port that I have on my case, and I now have 60 FPS all of a sudden. Oh, okay. Normally you want to avoid using the front panel USB port, as it usually does not have the power for high powered devices. But this seems to be working fine. That is until I realize that the audio has a tendency of being out of sync a lot of the time. Damn it. Shoot. And there were weird audio popping and skipping sometimes? Yeah, this, this doesn't work either. Okay, well, I bought this for Linux anyways, might as well try it on Linux. As much as Linux gets a lot of flack for not being user friendly sometimes, it's really good at quick fixes and or troubleshooting if you know what you're doing. So I connected it to my 2014 gaming laptop running Pop! OS on NVIDIA drivers, loaded up OBS, and oh my god it captures at 1080p60 and YUI2 as flawlessly as I can observe. No choppy frame rate, no desyncing. 
This was both an OBS and GUVC view. Quick addendum, this seems to be half true now. In keeping in theme with me questioning my reality this video, the second I went to go get footage for this is the second I start dropping frames on OBS. You're just gonna have to take my word that this was working before I updated to the most recent version of Pop! OS, but now it seems that actually trying to record on my laptop has encoding lag issues now, which basically means that my GPU is just barely too weak for 60 FPS at a consistent frame rate. This doesn't necessarily undermine anything of what I'm trying to prove in this video, just it felt wrong not to include it once I actually started to grab b-roll for this. Anyways, let's continue. By the way, good tip when testing if a card is capturing the full frame rate, is that some of my best test footage is actually from the console's home screens, because they were designed with 60 FPS in mind. Of course you'll still want to capture gameplay, but just keep in mind that some games have lower frame rates, and others have a tendency of dropping frames at intense moments. Especially true for a title like Infamous, which I have found constantly to have an inconsistent frame rate. But at least it's not 22 FPS constantly. If there's a more scientific way of testing this, please let me know because I, purely doing this manually is making me feel like I'm being gaslit. Like, I got to the point of writing this video, I had to compare Mario Kart footage by hand just to confirm that I was correct. At this point, I got super curious and connected my MacBook Pro. I knew it wasn't powerful enough to actually record, but I had to know if... The, the preview... The preview is better! Sure, the recording is complete and utter garbage, but that's to be expected. The preview was 60 FPS. And... And when I was recording, OBS gave me the correct FPS count. Though in hindsight, I was probably putting my poor MacBook at its limits, trying to encode footage that was way too huge for its processor. But it was still good to see that it seemed to be grabbing the frames properly. Okay, so this capture device works better on my 2014 laptop running Linux than it does on my Windows 10 PC. I may have questioned my sanity at this point. This indicates to me that the USB might not be providing the correct bandwidth or power or both from the rear I.O. for a number of reasons that is needed to properly use this thing. But at this point, I was unaware if this was due to the hardware or the software. So what I did next was load up live ISOs of both AV Linux and Pop OS on my desktop to see if I could get better results on my rear I.O. Well, they were only able to use my Ryzen processor for encoding, it did better performance once I dialed in the right settings. Pop! OS could even manage the full 60 FPS, even though it was only software encoding with X264. I was having some screen tearing with AV Linux, and it was only hovering around 50-ish FPS. I'm not sure if this is a kernel thing, or the free display nouveau drivers thing, I'm, I'm really not sure on that. So, from what I gathered from this, it is possible that it's a Windows-related issue of some kind. Either how Windows handles USB or UVC, but that's kind of an uneducated guess for me. I don't know what I'm doing. However, I didn't want to install a new OS just to use this capture card. I am also currently out of hard drives and disk space. So... <laughs> I knew that I would get different results by using something other than the rear I.O. ports on the back of the motherboard, so I just bought a PCIe to USB 3.0 hub. Look, sometimes the answer to your problem is just to buy something. Don't want a 50 foot wire of Ethernet? BAM! Power line adapters! Can't live without them. But sure enough, once I opened up the Game Link software, 60 FPS! When recording, I observed no desyncing and no other audio issues like I did with the front USB port. The only issue is that I can't get to 120 FPS in Windows still, but that's okay because I only really care about 60 FPS in YUI2. So I'm very happy to get this USB device working. But now I have a nagging curiosity. This could be a weird issue with some units, or maybe it's something that's wider than any of us are aware. My friend Brandon also told me that Windows has some weird power saving rules that kick in sometimes to reduce power usage. So maybe that's it? The funny part was after I solved my issue, I found out that Matt CK had a similar issue with his Clonerbox Pro, even has similar software with a branding switch. This was kind of surreal to watch. 
Though a key difference between his issue and my issue is that for him, switching the operating system didn't seem to fix his frame rate issues uh, when watching the video back, so I'm unsure if what I found here could help him. Uh, sorry Matt, if, if you're watching. So uh, yeah, those are the trials and tribulations I had with this device. Uh, if you had similar issues with a capture device, please let me know uh, what you did to troubleshoot and try to fix your issue. Uh, I'm not very knowledgeable on how to properly diagnose the issue with this thing, but uh, I had some few good guesses apparently. Uh, like my friend said, it could just be the Windows power management and whatnot. And there's no way that I'm the only person that dealt with this. It's got to be a little bit more common than just one guy. Uh, aside from that, thank you for watching a Canadian prove that he's not insane. I'm not, by the way. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy future content where I explore uh, the laptop featured in this video that I put Pop! OS onto. Um, it's one of the bigger projects, but I hope to get it done before the end of this year, unlike uh, well, a lot of other bigger projects that I did previously. I am now beholden to future me to get that done. And I guess past me. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, be on the lookout for that. But if you like just my comedy, uh, I have a backlog of videos on this channel. Uh, if you want to check them out. I like to think I'm funny. I don't know how to end this video.